Okay. Alrighty. So, again, uh, let me see. Jamie Ann and I are with Anchorage Community Land Trust, and I help out uh, with the food team. Um, so, you know, food businesses and anything related to, to that or anything related to like general business um, support services or technical assistance, um, you know, you're able to come to us and uh, we will do our best to make sure that uh, we see you through that process to make, take your business to the next level. <clears throat> uh, so I come from a background of like mainly mental health uh, <clears throat> and then I've been a bit of a serial entrepreneur throughout my adult life too. So that, uh, you know, just a blend of mental health, doing a bunch of like different businesses throughout the years um, has kind of led me on down this path to be here with Anchorage Community Land Trust. And I think I'll keep mine simple because I can talk forever. So I'll pause there, bounce it over to Jamie Ann, uh, a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my name is Jamie Ann, and I am fairly new to Anchorage Community Land Trust. Uh, but in the short time that I've been here, uh, the team is just spectacular, and and working with uh, the community and the clients has just been a joy. So I'm really excited to be here um, with you all today. Um, I uh, also. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur and own uh, a bakery here in town. So that is really helpful uh, <laughs> in the job. I have walked through it all, um, the tragedy and the triumphs. And I'm really excited to share and to help other people reach their goals and dreams. Um, so this is really important work and I'm really happy to be doing it. And I'm and excited that you're all here and excited to get to know you and chat with you today. Um, and it looks like Megan is here from the farmer's market. And um, if she would like to take some time to introduce herself and talk a little bit about what they did, that would be really great if you're ready for that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry that I hopped on a couple minutes late, um, but I would love to do that. I'm getting kind of my bearings, but my name is Megan Geary. Um, I'm the local foods coordinator for the Alaska Farmers Market Association, and um, it's just so exciting to be here and be partnered with ACLT on this um, workshop series. It We had a really great um, first kind of first webinar <laughs> um, a couple weeks ago. And so I'm really excited for tonight, but I will keep it very brief too, so that I don't take up um, too much time for Jamie Ann and for Jay. But I do wanna just share um, a couple of resources that we have. I'll put them in the chat here. Um, we have a new updated directory, which is very exciting. Um, that has been kind of rolling out this summer. And now um, we're including CSAs, which is Community Supported Agriculture <clears throat> and Farm Stands, in addition to Farmers Markets and Food Hubs. So we're trying to expand. Um, and then within those markets, excuse me, um, individual vendors can also have profiles on um, kind of under a, a market umbrella, which is really exciting too um, for advertisement purposes. I apologize for background noise if you hear um, my neighbors, but um, making noise. But um, yeah, so this directory we're really excited about. Um, and our website that link goes to also has a plethora of resources um, for farmers markets and managers, but also for individual vendors as well. That can be really useful. So um, yeah, a little bit about what we do. I kind of... <laughs> glossed right over that, but um, we have different events and trainings like this webinar, um, and we also have uh, a plethora of resources like I mentioned through our website, and we manage um, a network for the farmers markets across the state of Alaska, but really our main goal is education and getting information out to people, so um, we love partnerships like this with ACLT, and I just want to say thank you for giving me a minute to share that directory, and I'm very excited um, for the webinar tonight. Thank you guys. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for that. We're so excited for the partnership as well. And, um, and that you were able to join us. So awesome to hear what you guys got going on. Super excited for a fabulous summer season. Awesome. Well, I think we can move on into introductions. We'd love to hear. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see a few people that were back from the um, the workshop last month, but we would really love to hear. Um, feel free to unmute and kind of go through. I don't know, Jay, if you can see everybody that's on there and maybe kind of prompt them. We would love to know your name, where you live, what food do you sell or aspire to sell. And then okay. if you can put your um, email in the chat when you go, that would be great. Um, that way we can get you this slide deck and a few other inf um, bits of information at the end. We'll share that out for some resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh... I feel free if, if anyone would like to start, uh, go for it. If not, I will pick a name. Alrighty. So I will. Hello. Yeah, you're kind of quick on the lip there. No caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all the caffeine I've had today. Oh, Miss okay. Quinn. I don't, I don't feel so bad now then. I had okay. a lot of caffeine too. Um, but yeah, my name is Gwen Alexander, and I operate GMOS Crafts and Gifts, as well as uh, I uh, have baked goods and uh, dinners and lunches that I sell at the Gathering Alaska Cafe on Fridays. And I'm looking forward to doing the food truck at the farmer's market on the Fridays starting, you know, in a couple of months here. And so that's what I'm aspiring to sell. And um, i already started putting together my little menu for that but um mostly i do bake goods i'm also at the um anchorage not anchorage arctic recreation center on saturday until the end of july um and i sell my baked goods over there as well so that's just basically what i'm doing but and starting this month at the cafe just to put a plug in <laughs> i'm doing fried chicken dinners and meatloaf little mini meatloaf dinners with uh mashed potatoes corn uh buttermilk biscuit and gravy so just to, just for fyi <laughs> and that's where uh, the Gathering Alaska Cafe. I won't be there next Friday. I'll be there this Friday, but I'm not going to be there next Friday. And then I'll be there the, the other Fridays after that. And I'm is just. That, is that in Remade? Yeah, Remade. Next door to Remade. And I'll be running that for the until October, probably. Um, I'm, I decided not to change up, but I also have the, you know, my baked breads and cookies and other stuff out there as well. So we'll see what happens. That sounds amazing. You'll see me out there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see some coming through the chats. Uh, okay, so hi, my name is Kathy, and I just uh -huh. shared in the chat that I also, in addition to being Jazzercise Anchorage, as it says at the bottom of my screen, um, I'm also the coordinator for the Anchorage Farmer's Market that happens on Saturdays at 15th and Cordova. Oh, cool. Awesome. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, yeah, do, do you uh, do you have any food or any uh, items you aspire to sell? Uh, me, not personally. I kind of came as a, what is everybody going to hear so that I can make sure I'm, you know, ready for those kind of inquiries. <laughs> mm, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh-huh. <coughs> um let's see da -da. lauren i see you pop up hi hello yes, i'm here uh my name is lauren Giroux. um i live in homer um i'm the uh director of our local farmer's market down here as well as actually an AFMA board member so that's what brings me to the table tonight um i don't myself really aspire to sell food but um I'm really into learning how I learning how I can best empower people in our community who do have those dreams and kind of help them make a reality so um yeah that's why I'm here tonight so nice to meet you all awesome thank you for being here 
And Laura, did you say um, farmer's market down in Homer? I did, yeah. Okay, awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then let's see. Ooh. Just moving down the list, we have uh, Rosenthal. Is it Mara Rosenthal? Hello? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm in Anchorage and I am um, looking into making some baked goods um, with a partner. So we haven't quite. Um, designated our menu, but um, we're looking into uh, getting a trailer. And so I'd just like to know more about kind of the regulations and the process on that. Thanks for hosting. Oh yeah, thank you for being here. <clears throat> cool beans. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then uh, Gerilyn and Rachel, hopefully I'm saying names right. <laughs> Um, yes, that is correct. Gerilyn and Rachel. Uh -huh. We are, oh, we live in Anchorage and we are hoping to start a poly food truck. We are very, very, very new. We don't know anything yet. So we're just super excited to learn everything. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, ask questions as much as you can, and then uh, we'll be sending out uh, uh, a resource uh, email after after the class. So uh, you'll okay. have an email to kind of reach out to us uh, as you have follow-up questions too. So don't okay. hesitate, don't be shy, ask away, okay? Awesome, thank you. Yeah. And then I think uh, bouncing around our last uh, one here, uh, Charlotte McKay, you put in the chat, hello all, Mike does not work, but my name is Charlotte from Anchorage, Alaska. I work with the Fresh International Garden Program at Grow North Farm in Mountain View, which grows fresh produce and various herbs and crops. Uh, as others have said, I do not aspire to sell myself, but I am here to learn. Uh, that is that is awesome. Thanks again for being here and you know looking for resources and uh, and uh, knowledge to be able to pass on to the farmers uh, and the vendors within your farmers market. So really appreciate this uh, and every, wherever you're at in your journey. I'm glad you're here with us. <clears throat> uh, Alrighty, I think I think that's everyone. Um, I'm going through the list. And if I missed you, I do apologize. And please speak up and ask questions as we go on through the next uh, uh, hour and a half here together. <laughs> Alrighty. With that, I will pass it back over to Jamie Ann. Uh -huh. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, well, no it was really great to um, meet you all and learn a little bit about you. Um, I think this one, this particular workshop is about cost of goods sold, um, how to price your products, how to calculate your break even, um, choosing point of sale. So, kind of like this is your uh, the meat and potatoes of your business like how uh, we had a lot of questions about this on the last workshop but um we can address other other topics so if you had questions on the food truck and stuff like that that i would really like this to be a conversation so if you guys have questions um it's not a formal uh <laughs> class setting so please feel free to ask questions put them in the chat or just unmute yourself and ask um because uh, it's it's definitely a lot of information that we're packing in the hour and a half too. So uh, uh, yeah, I would just invite you all to do that. Um, so cogs calculating and so cogs is the cost of goods sold for each product, and we're going to kind of this is kind of like a brief uh, one on one onto how to price your items. Um, and into that cost is going to be your ingredients, your equipment, and time versus profit. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, especially when you're starting out because you're not getting paid, you're not tracking your time. So that's a very important um, topic as well. Um, and then calculating in your other expenses is going to be like your permits, insurance, um, however you're advertising um, your market or whatever event you're 
you're doing, uh, the rental space and utilities, and how this all kind of plays into the calculation of um, the price of goods that you sell. So that's a little, Jay, do you have anything? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, kind of diving into this, uh, I think my, my biggest emphasis is a lot of times that uh, individuals, uh, we will, we will look at ingredients, we'll look at equipment, costs, and those things, but then we usually uh, skip over the time, uh, the, the time part of it. And so if there's any way that uh, either you yourself as uh, someone who's getting into the industry or someone who is supporting someone who is getting into the industry or is already in the industry, um, making sure that you do calculate that time piece to it also. You know, just because um, I think my biggest uh, my biggest thing is that uh, you know, you may you may see like a thousand dollars come in one weekend, right? Um, but then if it takes you um, eighty hours that week to be able to produce enough materials um, to be able to sell for that thousand uh, dollars, you know that time really ties into it also. And a lot of times uh, we, we miss out on calculating that into it. So it's one thing that we don't, we may not necessarily put it into the actual calculation or the formula itself at first when we go into business. Uh, but it is something that I would like to say many of us miss uh, and would be nice to be able to just keep, keep in the back of our mind so that uh, you know, we, we pull that up too as we go through our numbers, okay? I think that would probably be my, my biggest thing for, uh, you know, for COGS. Uh, I guess like the second one would probably be like utilities um, is because most of the time people are in like cottage industry, right, Jamie Ann? All right, so it's just like, well, I'm cooking out of my kitchen. I mean, my, my daughter is also cooking out of my kitchen, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, how do I separate the time to be able to like know, all right, I use 80% or I use 80% for personal and only 20% of the time or, you know, of my utilities is for business, right? Um, so so it's, it's kind of like gauging um, how much utility you might be utilizing for your business. You know, uh, a, good, a good way to do it um, many times is to kind of just gauge a percentage, you know, if you're like, oh, roughly we we use the sink about like this many times, or we we use water, we use utilities, or we use electricity about this much throughout the day, every day, and then uh, out of that usage time, I maybe spend about three hours a week or three hours a day, um, and uh, uh, and so kind of take like a rough estimate of that for utilities, and I think. Um, plugging that into it might be like a good way of like starting off with that calculation. I know uh, hopefully <laughs> this isn't diving too deep into something that we'll be talking about more later too. I have a tendency of, of just rambling on. <laughs> no, you're good. I think it's actually the perfect time because we don't really go in too deep into what the other expenses really entail. So that's perfect. Um, and I think, I think when you're doing, uh, farmer's markets, you are most, pretty much everyone is, um, on a cottage license and that gets really tricky. So I think that's excellent, excellent input and definitely a hard one to calculate. So if anybody has any questions on that, feel free to ask. Um, I think why COGS is so important is because this is the building blocks to your business and how to properly price things, but also, when you're moving along um, and wanting to grow and expand, you're going to be um, doing business plans and projections based off of your prices. And so this is kind of like the first Lego block in the, the foundation of your business. So um, please feel free to ask questions about the other expenses, permits, or anything of that nature as we're moving through. If you're like, okay, that's great, but where would this expense be in my COGS? Cool, so if nobody has any questions, I guess we'll just jump right into how to calculate, huh? Yeah, just feel free to interrupt us as uh, as we go through this, if, if things come up, okay? Um, treat this like a, 
you know, tea time with us and really do have a conversation with us, okay? <laughs> you can keep right, your so cameras off. Uh, just wanna let, uh huh. Oh, sorry, I'm interrupting. <clears throat> no, no, you're good. My camera's off? No, no, no. I said uh, for, for participants, you can keep your camera off. Oh. If, uh, you know, because I know sometimes I'm just like, it's the end of the day. I do not, I do not want to be on camera, but I do have some questions. So um, feel free, just you can keep camera off. Just ask away, interrupt us as things come up. Uh -huh. <clears throat> All right, I'm, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you're good, you're good. So how do you price your product? Um, we kind of briefly went over this and uh, Amanda did at the last uh, workshop, your general rule is when you price a product, it's three times your COGS, but um, then the rest of the price goes into your general expenses, payroll and profit. Um, and just for all intents and purposes, it sounds like we have a lot of bakers. So I'm really glad that we went with chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> So hopefully this will help you guys kind of see. This is a real-time receipt um, for Nestle Tool House um, and the cookie recipe. So we can kind of go through and see how we price it based on the prices of goods that we purchased. Um, so just to give you a little background, the cost of goods purchased is divided by your recipe quantity and divided by the yield. And this will give you the cost of your product ingredients. And this, this is just the product ingredients, not um, your total cogs, which we talked about. That's your utilities and, and costs and all that. So um, at the traditional grocery store, we spent $28.37 um, buying all of our goods to make this recipe. Um, and then when you get into it, here is the actual recipe for the, the cookies. So this is where you're gonna get into like all of your, your cups and your teaspoons. And on the right hand side of this um, is just kind of like the price for quantity. And you can see that. So it's, it's 239 for two pounds of brown sugar. Um, and this is kind of how you would price it out and, uh, to get your, your price of your ingredients. And this slide will show you kind of how it kind of how it all gets divided out. There's 18 cups of flour in a five pound bag, and you paid $4.99 for that bag of flour, um, which brings it down to 28 cents a cup. And you're using two and a quarter cup for this recipe. So your cost of flour for this is 63 cents. And that goes, this goes through the entire recipe. Um, and this is kind of daunting if you have to do it um, for all of your recipes. And I would highly encourage, there are um, apps out there. A really good one is called Salt and Pepper and that is what the app does. So you enter the cost of your, your receipt, which is in, if we go back here, if you, this receipt right here, you would enter in and say, okay, I bought, actually it's this one, I bought, um, light brown sugar, and you put in the quantity two pounds, you type in, I pay 239 for it, and it breaks it down for you just like this. And it will tell you how much your cost for the recipe is, and then you put in your yield. And for this particular recipe, it yields five dozen chocolate chip cookies. So then you would divide your cost of the recipe by 60 cookies, giving you 13 cents per cookie. And then if we're going off our model of the COGS and it's three times your ingredient price, you would round it up, it's 39 cents, but I would highly suggest that you round it up to 40. <laughs> um, 39 gets a little tricky when you're adding up 10 to 12 cookies at 39 cents. So um, does that make sense to everybody? Does anybody have questions on that, on how we got to that number? Or is it making sense? Can I get a copy of this slide in hard copy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We're going to be emailing you the, the entire presentation um, yeah. as well as a few other items. Well, see, we didn't get the last one. I didn't get it at least. Uh, the other, the first one, the workshop. I never oh, got a copy okay. of the slide. I can send you both, Glenn. Okay, that'd be great because this is uh, this would help a lot. I, I actually sell my cookies two for three dollars. So, and this the way that you have it here. Th these are the ingredients I use in my chocolate chip cookies. Believe it or not, 
and I do get the 18 pack of large, uh, large eggs. So this is a whole breakdown for me right now of everything that I use because I pretty much oh. use the same thing for just about everything I, to keep, keep, keep costs down. So yeah, but I do, I sell two chocolate chip cookies, kind of, they're quite big too, uh, for $3 for two cookies. So that's $1.50 each cookie. That's great. This is just kind of going off of our, and, and I think that the yield on here, I don't know, I've made this recipe before and I don't get five dozen. <laughs> um, so I think the best way to do your cogs is based off what you actually get from the recipe. So if this is a recipe that you do and you make them bigger, if you, maybe you only get 24 cookies out of that, then you would, that would just uh, plug into your yield. So instead of five dozen, you would do two dozen and that's how you get the cost of your cookie. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I I do get, um, actually I get 32 cookies out of my recipe. I get 32 cookies out of it, the big cookies. But if I do the little baby ones, not, I call them baby, but they're the, the size of what a tangerine size is the okay. big size. Yeah, I can get five or six dozen out of my recipe if I make them that size. So, so if you're only getting thirty-two, then that bumps up your um, cost to twenty-four cents a cookie. Yeah. So. so I mean, you're 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 there, but you know, farther along in the slide, we're going to talk about knowing your worth. Now, oh. you know, anybody can make this cookie, but I'm sure that you make a spectacular cookie, so you want to price it according to, um, you know the value of your cookie and your time and your expertise. So I, I don't think you're, I think you're probably spot, spot on with your prices, but this really helps you just to make sure that you're within that profit margin. Mm -hmm. I think as bakers, and I'm, I'm definitely guilty of this too, we're like, what seems fair? You know, <laughs> like, what are other people selling this for? I think I'm gonna sell this cupcake for $3 because that seems fair, but really we need to be pricing it off of the ingredients that we're putting in, especially now. I don't know if you guys can attest to this, but butter is outrageously priced right now. Um, and everything is like slowly rising. So if we're not paying attention to our prices going into our recipes, then we're really at a detriment if we're not, if we're not making at least, a, you know, that, that price margin needs to be at least a third of, your, of the cost of your product. But yeah, we'll definitely get this one out to you and the next one out um, as well. So as we look into this, we're gonna um, move into our, our other costs and how we, how we calculate a rate even for an event. So if we were down at the farmer's market and we wanted to sell our cookies, now we know how much it costs per cookie if we make them at that. If we, if we add in all of our others, the booth fee is 30, I have to have insurance, it's $10. The $20 is what we purchased for the entire. Uh, that was the original receipt, not the 760 eight that was our recipe ingredients, but we want to break even for everything. So that's the $28. Paper goods are going to be like your packaging, and napkins, um, business cards, anything that you have out there, your cleaning chemicals, and your transportation to the market. So it cost us $98 to sign up for this booth at the market. And, and we want to um, we want to know how much we have to do to, to make a, a profit. So if our farmer's market is four hours long, we already put in $98 to be here. So our sales per hour break even is $24.50. And uh, anything over that is profit. So in order to reach that, we have to sell 62 cookies per hour. Or overall, you have to sell 248 cookies at that 40 cents to make the break even. Um, and then that will tell you, um, you know, this is a great way to look at it because when you're going to a market and you're like, oh, I have no idea how many cookies I need to make, um, this will kind of give you a great, a, a better idea of like, I need to make at least 500 cookies if I want to make a big profit. Um, is that making sense to everybody? Anybody have any questions? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, and, and again, I'm, I'm driving home that, uh, that time piece, right? You know, uh, this, this does not take into consideration uh, your, your time in this too. So, uh, you know, considering your prep time, your shop time, shopping time, um, your waiting for things to cool time, packaging time, and then uh, your drive time to the farmer's market set up uh, before the four hours of your market and then the four hours after, right? So uh, we, we look at all of this and then uh, you know, just to get like that, what your ingredients and your numbers add up to uh, just, for, just for what you have to pay out, right? And then uh, as you start building this out, you, uh, you will start, adding in your, your time and your value into this also. Um, and hopefully, you know, you can have like a nice growth um, or your market vendors can have nice growth so they can start considering their time in this. Because many of us entrepreneurs, we don't pay ourselves for the first however long um, of our business venture. Um, and we all wait until we get to a certain profit margin before we, um, before we even consider putting in our hours. Uh, so I would say gauge it, track your hours. You don't have to like log it into your cogs, just uh, you know, right up front, but you, you should probably know it so that when you get to that place where you're just like, I think I need to, uh, I think I need to want to start pricing this in, um, all your numbers are there so that it's easier to like start adding in uh, your labor costs and your other costs in it too. <clears throat> uh -huh. um, yeah, thoughts, Jamie Ann, everyone else? <clears throat> I think that's really great because then it, you know how we were talking about, you can see your profit would be really what you would be paying yourself for that event. So whatever you can make um, over your break even, you can kind of take a look at how many hours of effort you put into this, you know, particular market and see, you know, because I think there's so many unforeseen things. I, I'll use this as an example. I talked to Jay about it. Um, in my business, um, I own a bakery. And so we had a wedding cake this weekend. We ordered flowers, specific flowers for a wedding cake. Uh, we went to pick them up and somehow, some way they didn't have them. So now we're, we're at the 11th hour, like, what do we do? Nobody has flour, the, the specific flour. So my business partner ended up going to like four different flower shops and striking out because it's wedding season. They don't have any extra flowers, the exact ones that we wanted. Um, and then the flower shop called back and said, just kidding, we found them. So that was uh about two hours of uncalculated time that we didn't um account for and so you know all of these little things go into the costs and you really have to look at all the time that you're spending going to the grocery store to get your goods all of the time that you're building recipes all the time that you're baking the recipes it all goes into that that um time and it's important that you're um paying attention to that because you're going to want to see how you can be more efficient how you can cut those costs of your time um and and really get an idea of how to build a business that's going to be sustainable by cutting um cutting that time that you're using doing that and figuring out how you can get your the best use of your time is it used baking or or is it used going shopping could you order online and pick up instead of going to all these different stores and and doing it yourself so just those little um like little shortcuts of efficiency <laughs> will really pay off in the long run True. We have a quiet group this week. I think everyone's had a week, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so how can we track it? Now that you've got like the idea of how you price it, how are you going to keep track of your goods? Because you're going to want to really keep track of um, how your, what your sales are, and it gets, you know, sometimes pretty daunting. And these are really simple solutions. You could do a spreadsheet. You could 
you know, price it out yourself, like how we did in, in the previous slide and say, okay, this is how I'm going to price out all of my costs. Um, and then I'm going to keep a folder with all my receipts and track all my expenses manually. Um, if you can do that, kudos. I could never. I don't have, A, I don't have the time as an entrepreneur and uh, <laughs> I'm sure we're all working as well. Um, so I'm our parents. So for me, this is where that comes in, like how can you use your time more efficiently? But sometimes you can't afford it. Uh, QuickBooks uh, is about $20 a month, but you can um, link your QuickBooks to your bank account directly. It also integrates with Square, the point of sale system. Um, so it's tracking your money coming in, your money going out. Um, and all it, it's a super smart program you can um, plug in rules that show every time I go to Costco, that's a cost of goods sold, that I'm buying a uh, product for my goods. Um, and so it categorizes it that way. And when you um, reconcile each month, it's really simple. It, it puts it in what came in, what went out, does everything look good? Yes, you're good to go. Um, so I would highly suggest um, QuickBooks. FreshBooks is, is another similar one. Um, it does the same thing. It's just kind of like a Samsung phone and an iPhone. They both do the same. It's just kind of based off of what you, the user, prefer. Um, and if you want to get really crazy into it, Mint is uh, an add-on to QuickBooks. It's an app. And it will actually track your mileage for you. It's kind of like a personal accountant as well. Um, and also, I think due to the GPS, it will tell you like you spent two hours in Costco. <laughs> so it's a good kind of a, it's a, a personal tracker. It's more of like a personal um, accounting tool, but you can, it's also really I think you can every time you're moving in your car, it'll say, should I track your mileage Jesus for business? And you can hit yes or no. Uh, but all of these apps cost money, but it just really depends on on your mindset, if this is efficient and, and you don't have to spend time on it, is it worth it? Probably. For me, it is. Uh, it, it's definitely a great way. Uh, I'm not an accountant, so it's a, a really great kind of reminder tool too when you're uh, reconciling all your payments at the end of the month. If something's off, even by 50 cents, it catches it. And so it's really efficient and accurate. Jane, you have anything? Um, yeah, let, let's see. Uh, I think with Mint, I just like, uh, oh man, I'm having a bit of a mind little moment here. <laughs> but I feel like sometimes like for, for some individuals, it might feel a little bit scary, right? Utilizing, uh, utilizing an app that has that much uh, data that's being collected from you and your phone and your movement. Um, utilizing GPS and many other things, um, but it, if, if you can get past that, it is doing that, uh, it does make your life a lot easier because um, it'll, it'll track, uh, you know, all those little bits of information that usually you'll have to manually put it in. Now you just have to confirm that it did happen, right? <laughs> um, one other thing too here uh, that we're, since we're tracking expenses, one of the things that, um, that came up this year that I think would be fun, not, well, I guess fun too, for um, our farmer's market and, uh, and our food vendors too, chances are uh, it may come up too, is you see under like ingredient name and then product code, um, we don't necessarily have it here, but you can probably like, if, if this is a ledger that's on like an Excel spreadsheet or like a Google sheet or something, um, if you put into the ingredients name or, uh, or some kind of uh, expense category where you just type in a note saying, uh, I bought this for this reason, right? So some kind of notation saying like, this is why you buy this. Um, and the reason is uh, your for, so when I think of this, I'm thinking primarily of our farmers um, is there's, if for some odd reason, um, there was like a huge outbreak of something that happens at your farm and you have to take care of. And so that moment you're spending a lot of extra money trying to like um, 
trying to like get more manure or trying to like repatch the certain soils or you may have to like throw out um, certain soil um, and restart a, a new lot or a new patch um, or a new plot. And so, um, so if if you do if you track in those little things and uh, and you're just like, why did this happen this year? When you look back, you're able to kind of go back and see, okay, this happened in June, um, and my out my my output looked like this. Um, could there be a correlation? Um, or a causation between these two things, right? Um, another thing too that uh, we're nudging our farmers to do this year is is keeping track of like how big their plots are, um, and and so a thing for our food vendors is you know keeping track of how big your kitchen is, right? Keeping track of how much water usage you're using, keeping track of how much uh, promotion that you're doing for all of your expenses, right? And then also keeping track of how many trips you're making to the store to buy these things. Is it, um, uh, you know, and because all of those tie into your expenses. And so those examples, and then I come back to the plot because, uh, because we have some farmers that are expanding their commercial plots and they're not able to expand it on one lot. So they have multiple plots around town that they're going to. Um, and, uh, and they're driving around town considering price, gas prices are almost $6 this summer, you know, a gallon. <clears throat> um, all of these things ties into their expenses. And, uh, and then we're noticing that the bigger, the more plots that someone has during the summer uh, time, uh, the more they're able to grow, the more they're able to have for an output, but they also have more of a variety of different, um, what do you call it, different um, problems that they may run into. You know, maybe like one plot may have an, uh, a weird infestation of something specific that, that summer at that plot, but at another plot, you're perfectly fine. Right, so it's kind of like diversifying um, your your plots or your commercial farm, um, and we're we're having our farmers track all of that data for this summer, and uh, we're we'll be excited to kind of see how that pans out throughout the summer. But already we're seeing some of these things pop up where some sites are producing faster than other sites because. Um, different good things and then different bad things are popping up. And so uh, I would say besides just tracking like the numbers that are coming in, also track like the, the geographical things too uh, that ties into your expenses. <clears throat> um, so I'll, I'll plug that in as just like an anecdotal for this year. Um, and if, if everyone has questions and are interested enough, maybe we can revisit this conversation later in the summer um, and see how see how the numbers pan out and how the data pan out. <laughs> okay, so I will pause here <laughs> and let you do your thing, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Thanks, Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that brings us to a point of sale system, and this is the this is I don't know maybe the majority of you might already have point of sale systems, or if you're at that uh, place in your small business. Um, but I think the, a lot of questions that go into this, you know, are what are you currently doing? If you're not accepting credit cards, I would really encourage you to, you know, if you're at a market and people are coming up asking, you know, like, oh, do you take credit? Uh, how many how many sales are you losing if you don't have um, a system set up? And really now with Square, that's what I, you know, I use for my small business and I highly recommend. It's very cost effective and um, very user friendly. So if you're not utilizing a point of sale system and you have questions, please reach out because this is definitely um, a time and age, especially with COVID, people are trying to go paperless um, and and not use currency. Um, it's really important to have that set up. Uh, it's Square also will, um, you can input 
whatever products you're selling. So if you were doing cookies, you could put in, you know, I'm selling chocolate chip cookies for 40 cents. And all you do is open it and, and put in the quantity that they're, that they're purchasing. And you hit, um, you can do either credit or cash and it, it uh, will um, give you the report for the whole day, day. So it's not just your credit card sales, it can be your cash or whatever other um, you're taking. And, and it's all in one place. It's definitely um, a, great, a great way to kind of see um, if you're selling multiple items, it's a great way to see like, holy cow, I sold four times as many sugar cookies as I did um, chocolate chip cookies. So the next event, I'm going to go in and make more sugar cookies because I've sold out, you know, and, and really kind of seeing the quantities of the products that you're bringing in, the trends, and you might sell more chocolate chip cookies at the Spinard market than you do at the Muldoon market, you know, just kind of it's a really great um, tool that you can utilize to see the trends in your product sales. Um, and I don't, I think it's, I don't really, yeah, I would really be baffled if you weren't using something like that. <laughs> yeah. Jay, what do you think? No, I, I love it. I love it. And, and on top of like, on top of that too, uh, um, Pause me if you've already mentioned it and, and like my brain is just like skipping over this part. Um, but uh, it'll actually track your customers too. Um, and so if you have a customer that loves chocolate chip cookies and they keep coming back to you at every single one of your market <laughs> that you're at and they keep buying chocolate chip cookie, um, you'll be able to see like this customer. I have like 10 products, but this customer just keeps buying chocolate chip cookies. Um, and so now you're getting to know your customers a little bit more through just their purchase history with you. You know, um, the cool thing is like they, uh, they utilize that through the email and the card that is a, the email, the card and the phone number that is attached to the customer. Okay. So may, sometimes a customer may have multiple, um, multiple credit cards that they use, but then they only have one, one phone number that's associated with that, uh, with that customer. And so um, you're able to kind of like tie a lot of things together with Square if you utilize uh, building a customer profile on Square. <clears throat> um, and then on top of like getting to know your customers too, if, um, if you're at a place where you're just like, you know what, all of my, all of my business is done uh, virtually, I really don't handle cash much. Um, Square now has the option for you to be able to like open up um, a Square checking um, side of Square services and they will send you a debit visa card. Um, I think it's a debit visa card. Uh, it's either a debit visa or a debit master. <laughs> I think it's a debit visa. Uh, and so you activate that and it's uh, uh, it, it functions as a bank account for you. Uh, I want, I believe it's like, uh, the it's a FDIC's uh, 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 insured also. Um, don't call me on that insured part, but <laughs> you, they do definitely send you a card. And uh, what you do is if you start using that uh, as like your as your uh, your business card when you go out and make purchases everything is tallied on there as your expenses so now all of a sudden um you in one database you have all of your income uh and most all of your expense like most all of your income and expenses too um i say most because just almost always every, every once in a while we will get someone who uses uh, who still uses cash um, and I want to say if you're at a farmer's market, uh, you have a higher chance of someone utilizing cash at a farmer's market too than elsewhere. Um, and so, uh, so there is that little caveat that you might still have to track in a different way uh, with cash, but then for the most part, uh, you, run, you run the checking side of Square and everything's there for you. Um, so yeah, I... I personally, I still really like Square, all the things that they have to offer. My only downside that I would say that Square needs to do better is they charge a lot, <laughs> you know? 
Um, there is like, there is the free option, uh, which they only charge like 2.4% plus 30 cents uh, per transaction. But once you get into like bigger things where like if you hire an employee um, and you want to, you don't want your employee to know like your banking account that's on Square or have access to like administrative uh, access to your Square account, then that costs money. You know, um, if you are looking to have more control over your inventory, um, like more control as in like barcoding or, uh, you know, itemizing prices uh, uh, more than just like manually putting it in. If you want to automate certain things, it costs money per month, you know. Uh, if you want to go into their loyalty program, it costs money. If you want to use the uh, their loyalty program and send out emails and text messages, it costs more money, you know. So that's the only downside I would say that Square uh, is now moving into, um, which does cost money to do, but that's down the road as you're upgrading your business. Uh, the hope is that you, as you get more familiar with Square, with Clover, with your uh, point of sale system, uh, you also get familiar with this, the upsells that they have, right? Uh, and creative ways of going around it uh, before you have to like dive in and pay for those upsells, okay? Because the loyalty program, right? Um, you pay for it, it makes your life a little bit easier. But if you're just like, you know what? I don't wanna pay that extra $45 a month uh, for the loyalty program. Um, what you know is that the free side of Square, it's already letting you track what customer buys what. You know, at what time. And so you go into your customer profile. Granted, you have to do this more manually, uh, but you go into your customer profile and you're able to kind of gauge uh, their history with you uh, that way without the need to go into like a, a paid subscription for something else. And then you save up that money for down the road to where you're just like, you know what? Um, how much is $35, right? Maybe $35 is worth one hour of your time. Uh, and you spend two hours every week going through your customer uh, on your customer list on Square to kind of see like, okay, what's the purchase history this week? You know, what's the trend this week? Um, maybe when you get to a place where you're just like, you know what, I think I would like to save two hours of my time and pay that extra like $45 or whatnot uh, a month to be able to, uh, to have this convenience. Um, then I would say at that time, go for it. Upgrade, buy into it. Um, it'll make your life a little bit easier. But before then, uh, there are workarounds that can make you get to know your customers um, at, you know, at a deeper level too, you know, when it comes to like sales and such. <laughs> mm. I will pause here. I think, <laughs> I think that's enough talking for me on this subject. Um, <laughs> loyalty programming and <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> oh is it does anybody have any questions everybody's still doing okay are you guys still out there i have a question um so i've used square before and liked it um and then my business partner was thinking maybe apple pay um has anyone had experience using that or suggestions for or against that just curious so I personally haven't used Apple Pay, but then uh, I, if I can present a few questions, um, is is with merchant accounts uh, that are specific to Apple Pay, like things like Apple Pay, um, I would look into how they're advancing their business structure, right? <clears throat> um, currently, I don't know how Apple's going to do this, but currently Apple has like an odd thing of like increasing their um, their transaction cost. <clears throat> um, and I don't know if that's gonna roll over to Apple Pay also, or if that's just gonna stay on the app side of uh, Apple products. <clears throat> um, and so take a look at how much it's gonna cost per transaction, uh, their trend to change that or to increase that number. Um, also look at uh, how easy it is for them to be able to utilize different card, different transaction. Uh, do they need to have an, uh, an Apple product to be able to use it? Can they use other devices, other credit cards to, to be able to pay you through Apple Pay? Or is does that pin you down to just Apple? 
right? <clears throat> um, and then what else is there? <clears throat> so to, 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 to Apple. And then um, how do you manage your business accounts or does that tie you into like a, um, um, a personal transaction? Um, because what comes to mind, and again, I'm not too fam I'm not familiar with Apple Pay, so I don't know, but I'm thinking of things like Venmo, right? Um, Venmo, Facebook Pay, um, some parts of uh, PayPal, what it does is uh, it categorizes uh, a purchase or like a transaction as a personal transaction. Um, and then you, you have to, on your end, uh, um, what do you call it? Verify that it's a business transaction or you have to set up a separate account that is a business account to be able to run uh, business transactions. Um, and then the business transactions, a lot of times cost more than the personal transaction too. So I would, uh, I would say, I don't know um, about Apple Pay, but I would say if you can ponder these questions as you look deeper into whether or not Apple Pay is good for you, um, ponder, you know, will it lock you into just Apple customers? Um, what, what is their trend in increasing their, uh, their transaction costs? Uh, and then how easily will it integrate with like all the other things that you need to be able to make your business function, right? And so, so that integration costs your time, okay? Um, I, I've worked, like we've worked with multiple um, individuals who at the beginning of their business, they're like, well, these are all free, you know, like they're free. That's why we're using it. And then uh, we sit down and we run their cogs with them. And then at the end, we're just like, yeah, it's free, but it's taking you six hours a week to be able to like consolidate all of your expenses and income because you're taking uh, Google Pay, Facebook Pay, Apple Pay, Pay uh, Venmo, PayPal. Uh, <clears throat> and then you're also doing Intuit invoicing also. And so you're going, you're spending like a good few hours every week consolidating all of these different transactions into one. And then you have to keep track of where everything's coming from also. Uh, and so consider all of that into, um, into how you move forward with which point of sale system that you utilize. Um, I know it's a long answer. It's not like a yes or no. Uh, but hopefully it helps you kind of ponder it a little bit more. Does this bring up other questions? <laughs> um, I would say that Square does accept Apple Pay. Um, you, can, you can purchase the new, they have a little, so if you already have a Square account and you're happy with Square, they have a... Um, they have a, the, it's just like the little um, pad that you can use the Apple Pay. And I, I think the reason that people are going more towards Apple Pay is that it's more secure, um, it's faster. So you're, um, as soon as you tap, it's like instantaneous, not like when you um, swipe the card or, or insert your chip. Um, those are a little slower um, because it's encrypted in your phone, not an actual strip it's safer people can't like uh, grab your number or save your number because it's scrambled every time does that make sense um so those are the things that i know i know that if you choose to do apple pay it's a little bit cheaper taking apple pay to apple pay but i don't know the cost of taking um like like if you were to just go through the Apple Pay app, I, I'm not familiar with like the costing of somebody paying with a credit card or if that's even something that Katie can do like Jay said, or if it's just strictly Apple Pay customers. But I know that you can do it through Square, Clover, any of those take um, Apple Pay. Cool. All right, so uh, this is a little bit about buying in bulk. So now that you have like your pricing system and you're doing great and you're trucking along, 
uh, how can you cut your costs? How can you be more efficient with your COGS? And buying in bulk is one of the ways that you can do that. Um, but, you know, with it, every pro there's a con. So the things to think about, especially if you're in a con, if you're doing a cottage based business is, you know, how, how are you going to store a 50 pound, 50 pound bag of flour versus a five pound bag for an event? Um, will you use all of your product before the expiration date? Are you able to, um, you know, keep it stored properly? I mean, some of those big um, tubs like the um, Cambros, the big ones to keep the 50 pound bags, those are really expensive. You know, I think those are upwards of $100 a pop. So how are you going to properly store it? How are you going to, you know, um, ensure food quality and food safety uh are you at a place where you can purchase a costco card or can you you can do the day pass or go with a, a friend who maybe has a card to check it out to see if it's going to be worth your while um and then the great thing about deciding to go wholesale um is that they'll they'll pull the inventory for you and drop it off once you hit five hundred dollars costco with will deliver to you. Um, and Lindford will do the same. I think there's a little less expensive, like maybe 250 and they'll deliver to you. Um, but you know, those are really great items, but just as we broke it down when we did the costing for the chocolate chip cookies, you know, you're just gonna see that ingredient, the product ingredient cost go further down because you know you're paying five dollars for a five pound bag or you can pay fifteen dollars for a 25 pound bag or a 15 50 pound bag you know you'll just see your product costs go down and then your profit margin go up so you know those are just really good questions on or good questions to ask before you start looking at that but this is the easiest and best way to to um, boost your profit margin mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I'll chime in a little bit for our farmers uh, market managers also. Um, and buying in bulk are things that uh, we're pondering a little bit this summer. You know, a lot of new things, it sounds like we're doing this summer at Grow North Farm. Um, but uh, one of the things that we were pondering are things like, can we be that, uh, can we be that, that bulk, uh, you know, purchaser, uh, and then help distribute that to the farmers, right? So things like pre-season stuff, like manure, um, new soil, fresh soil, or, um, you know, buying, uh, buying the right seeds or uh, anything else that might be needed. Um, is it possible that we are, we, we are a resource for our farmers pre-season, during season, post-season um, to be able to like uh, get them through, right? That we can actually help them cut down cost um, and, you know, be able to support them at a deeper level uh, beyond what we see them at the market hours. Um, so just things to ponder when buying in bulk. Uh, it doesn't have to be like something that you do on your own. If you are in an industry where uh, you have different partners, you, you may be competitors, right? But then uh, deep down, you're all really helping each other find best practices, right? So if it costs uh, this much to order in bulk, this much, uh, Jamie, you mentioned butter, right? Uh, and butter might not be the, the best example. I'm not a baker, so I don't know, but let's let's run with this, right? Humor me for this moment, right? So um, it costs this much to buy butter by yourself. Uh, but if you can buy a whole load of butter, you know, for, uh, for let's say, uh, I don't know, 40% cheaper uh, than what you would by yourself, but you can't do that by yourself. You do that with like, with like 10 other bakeries in town and you buy this huge bulk and you just split it between, you know, between each of you every week. And this is how you do this, right? So buying in bulk, you can get very creative with this and you create your partnership, you create your relationship in the community um, and buying in bulk doesn't have to just be for you. It can be a community purchase. <laughs> so um, I just want to throw this out there. Think about it. 
ponder it, um, see what you, see what magic you can create with this. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll pause here. <laughs> no, that's a really brilliant um, tactic. Honestly, like for in the in the in the bakers industry, we we have a Facebook book group and it's a really great tool to really be allies with your competition because um in a pinch you know they're the ones that are knowing what you're going through um like oh my gosh i have to make this cupcake but i can't find papaya for it somebody help me these are your peers they're going to know where to get it um but we actually did a contract with the muse and um, did that with chocolate and it was so cost effective for us because we could not as a small bakery we could not afford to get this chocolate that makes you know this was when hot cocoa bombs were <laughs> the bane of my existence mm. but that's is when they were really taking off and doing well but we wanted to get up like a higher quality and, and do um, espresso in them like a mocha bomb um but, but we were like we want to do a higher quality but we got the pricing back and was like never mind we can't afford it um but the the chef running the muse was like hey i want to buy this chocolate but we don't we can't go through it and we were like we'll take it we'll buy it off of you um and so then it became affordable and it was just this really great um partnership and so part of owning a small business is really um having that community of other entrepreneurs that you can lean on and lift up at the same time and really um have you know there's a piece of the pie for everybody we don't have to be like don't don't um <laughs> don't talk to me if you sell big goods uh part of like a structure and i'm really grateful for it you know and anchorage is that if we have a way to help out a fellow baker we always will try you know like I can't get this to work out. My butter's curling. Oh, well, it's too hot. I try this and vice versa. So it doesn't matter what line of business you're in. If you can form out, out like partnerships and alliances, it's so good for the business and the community as a whole, because if, um, you know, you can't purchase it on your own, but you can with uh, other businesses, then that's a product and uh, a form of um, commerce that the community wouldn't be getting. Cool. Pretty sweet stuff, Jimmy Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my, I just caught that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Making puns don't even know about it. <laughs> So now you can take all of your numbers and project your growth. Um, and this comes in handy when you're um, when you're like, okay, I'm outgrowing my cottage claws. I'm making more than 25,000 a year, which I'm sure you guys are all gonna get there. And it's a great feeling, but it's also a very scary feeling. Um, so now you really have to say like, okay, how do I scale and grow my business? And this is a really great way. Um, we had already kind of talked about the product profit margins, like how do you cut costs and increase profit margins, you know, by a new bulk. Um, if you're at a market and you're using your square system and you see like, oh, I'm selling more of these cookies, maybe you um, increased the um, quantity the next time you come and increase your prices 25 cents, you know those small increment increases over time um, aren't as harsh and people are still willing to pay it. Um, the best time of day, this is really where like square reports come in handy because they'll tell you what your peak hours were um, when you were selling the most uh, products and what products you were selling during that time. Um, and that's why this point of sale system, you know, we can't really, uh, well, for me personally, I can't really express how important it is, and it's so time saving. And you can just go back and look at it, and it makes your next um, market or your next event, you know, you're you're more prepared and ready to go. Um, what do you think, Jay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> any any add-ons to that? Mm -hmm. No, I think that's good. You know, uh, just considering like all of the 
yeah, all the different things you're saying, I think I'm just reiterating that uh, uh, everything that we've talked about before really ties into this very nicely. We keep track of all your numbers. Uh, you can use your number to track uh, how, how your business is doing, what areas are good. I know I'm repeating a lot of what Jamie Ann is saying here, uh, but keep track of it. Uh, even some details where you're like, do I really need to log in this little bit of extra data about my business? Uh, put it in, right? Because you never know when you're gonna look back and you're just like, well, why did this go well? Or why did this not go well? Uh, you know, you, it might not make sense now, but uh, a year or two down the road, you might look back and be like, this is why. Okay. Um, and then you can use that little bit of like correlation to test out um, if there is a causation behind it. <laughs> okay. Um, and it all boils down to like your numbers, you know. Um, so it's, it's not magic, but sometimes it sure feels like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so when you're moving forward with that, you can look at growth opportunities, like what can you do to grow and expand? You know, if you're in a um, cottage kitchen right now, what's it going to take to, you know, like maybe you're hitting, you're getting really close, it's June and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm already at $20,000. I either have to stop selling once I hit 25,000 or I need to look at a commissary kitchen and then how are you going to calculate, you know, this is kind of blurring into step three, but really calculating your new needs and is, is this doable and feasible for you? Can I run a commissary kitchen? If I do that, then I can start catering bigger events. Um, I could start maybe doing a little bit of wholesaling um, and looking into that, uh, just kind of looking at every opportunity um, I think the next slide talks about, um, you know, if you're not ready to take those, those big steps, what can you do at your current place at your market? You know, an idea is if you're, okay, well, we're selling chocolate chip cookies, but what could we be doing to increase our sales, sell a beverage, you know, expand your menu. If you're um, selling a beverage, what goes better with cookies than coffee or I, maybe lemonade, I don't know. I've never had a chocolate chip cookie with lemonade, but it could be great. Maybe you, that's your new niche and you're like ginger lemonade with coffee or cookies, great. That's, um, but you might see that people don't like chocolate chip cookies, but they are coming to your booth because your coffee is amazing. So now instead of losing a sale, you're gaining sales with this new addition to your um, menu. Um, and beverages are a low, lower, profit cost, uh, product costs, and very much lower in your time versus value. So is, is it, you know, you're spending three minutes to make some coffee in your maker versus three hours making your, your cookies. And it's just a nice add on. Um, and then you, a great way is to make it unique. You know, can you make your own lavender syrup or your own, you know, fiery honey syrup that, that ties it into Alaska or something like that? You could put fruit in your ice cubes. A personal favorite of mine, and I do it at home, is that I freeze my leftover coffee so that in the summertime when I put my coffee ice cubes in my coffee, it's cold but not watered down. So could you do that um, and sell iced coffee at a um, farmer's market and, and, you know, have that little bit of a different, you know, something unique that sets you apart from everybody else selling iced coffee. So, um, and definitely use local ingredients from grown-up farms. <laughs> a little plug in there. Um, make a, you know, mint or basil uh, lemonade, something like that. Um, but the, the, those are really great small stepping stones to scaling up and improving your um, operation and, and um, really kind of being that small stepping stone that turns into bigger things for your first business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, I, I'll, I'll add like on the flip side of that too, um, you know, consider things that you may be buying to create a unique, I mean, to create a product to be able to, uh, to sell, right? Um, and uh, um, 
And are, is it something that you are just buying uh, to create this one product and then to sell it? But it's, uh, and then is it, is it selling well enough for it to be like a standalone product, right? And as I'm saying this, um, I'm thinking of like one of the ventures that I tried. Um, it was, uh, we, we, we thought it was a good idea to add salad because salad was like a great thing, you know? Um, but then everything else that we had were comfort food and salad was just like this one little bit that we added to it. And uh, we were throwing away um, like a five, about five pounds of salad um, like every week, you know? And it might not, I mean, I don't know if you think five pounds is a lot to me, I'm just like, that's a lot, you know? So we were throwing away like a lot of salads every week because we were purchasing salad for this one product uh, that we're like, it would be nice to be able to offer this to customers, you know, um, but it wasn't working well. So as you're going through this and you're finding like salads have the way that it, it adds up, it can be like a really nice profit margins, right? You know, beverages, same thing too, right? It can be like a, a really nice profit margin for you. Um, but make sure that uh, you're also finding something where you're, uh, what I, it's slipping my mind, Jenny, the, um, the cost to throw away things. Um, your waste uh, margin, yeah. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like consider your waste margin um in these things too you know because uh um on on paper those salads were like beautifully margined out you know with a nice profit margin but then when we consider that we were throwing out about five pounds of salad every single week um because it was going bad before we could get more and we couldn't scale back because what we were doing was like markets and so it wasn't like oh we can just sit and buy less of it to sell, you know, we could have, but then uh, what uh, what happens if it's like when we, we get more or something like that, right? So we're finding that we're throwing stuff away. If you're finding um, that you're in that spot, see if you can scale back, see if there's like certain things that you can do to be able to, uh, uh, to kind of um, like mitigate those things. Um, or like what Jamie Ann said, you know, with coffee and with like all those other things, um, see what you're already utilizing, right? <laughs> um, and, and so um, what was it? Um, a lot of times if you do barbecues and you have a lot of briskets, you know, um, you may take bits and pieces of it to make sandwiches. Um, uh, afterwards, right? And it may be like your, your day-old briskets um, that will be perfect because they've tender, uh, tenderized a little bit more, they've soaked up the, the flavors a little bit more. Um, and so they're like, they're perfect to like, die, uh, to like uh, plug into a sandwich that will sell very nicely. <laughs> um, so yeah, take, I mean, I know I've kind of like gone off, <laughs> gone off the deep end and away from beverages here. Oh, but, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's over, in, over increase overall sales. So <laughs> yes, it doesn't uh -huh. have to be beverages. It can be <laughs> whatever you imagine. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I, 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 I like it. I, uh, anything that you have that is sitting there that you can utilize to be able to like make, uh, uh, make another product that increase your profit margin, also utilize your, uh, your uh, a better way to like do bulk ordering, you know, for your cost of sales, cost of goods. Um, yeah, go for it, dive in, utilize it, make some creative stuff. Uh, oh. mm -hmm. So this is a really important aspect and um, it's know your worth. Uh, and this really kind of comes into like, um, Ms. Glenn was talking about her pricing of her cookies. And this is a really important topic because a lot of times when we're just starting out, pricing things are scary because, you know, now you've got your price of your ingredients. And now you know what your fixed expenses are for, um, you know, 
your utilities and your booth price. Um, but really a big part of your pricing of your product should be, um, they should reflect you. And really that comes into your education, your ex experience, your expertise, your skills, your quality, and your time. And so, you know, I've been making cakes for 10 years, longer than 10 years, but what I priced my cakes at 10 years ago, you know, even based on inflation versus what I charge now is really um, vastly different, mainly because of my expertise and um, the market and the clientele that we have now. So, you know, I would really encourage you to know that your COGS are not, once you get your pricing put in and you've got a set price, that's not the end of the, the line. Like COGS are, are I like to consider them like a living, breathing cog, you know, in a clock, they're constantly turning and moving. And that has to be your cost of goods as well. So you can't just set a price and say, okay, we're good. This is what we're gonna run with. Um, you're always gonna have to account for inflation and adjust for that, especially right now, everyone's seeing that. These are the highest inflation prices and I'm seeing things jump um, week to week, not month to month or year to year. It's getting kind of crazy. Um, but I think this is where the time comes in that Jay and I are talking about. If you're selling something that nobody else is selling and um, you decided to go into business um, to do this particular thing, to fill a gap because nobody's doing it or maybe somebody else is doing it, but you can do it better. Like this, these are all variables that go into the pricing of your good. Um, if you're at a market and you're next to somebody else selling baked goods and you guys are selling the same things, but you're selling out every week and they're not, that's speaking to the um, demand of your baked goods. So you should probably think about increasing your prices to meet that demand. You might lose um, one or two customers to the, your competitor, but people are gonna pay that extra little bit for a really great cookie. Um, so really, this is where we get timid and shy as we're like, well, everybody else is selling it for $3, but so I'm just gonna sell my product for $3, but you might be making a $5 cookie, but because everybody else is selling it for three, that's what you're gonna go with. So sometimes it's really hard to find that fine line of, okay, selling at $5 means that my markup is closer to 40% or 50%. But if you can sell it for that price, do it. Like this is something that you really need to take into consideration. And maybe when you're starting out, you just go by the three times rule, that's great. Um, and then you can kind of reassess and see the next year, well, maybe I'm gonna up my prices 3% because now I'm a little bit more experienced. It doesn't have to be like a huge jump, but you should always be looking at, you know, the, the market and how things are shifting and what you bring to the table. So that's a really important thing that I think a lot of entrepreneurs overlook and are just looking at the numbers because when you're first starting out, it's really daunting to know what should I price at? What should I do? Um, but you know, a really important thing to think of too, when you're looking to scale and grow, when you do your project uh, projections for your financials, if you're trying to get um, a loan, they're gonna look at that and see like, okay, well, they've been in business and every year their product is increasing in small increments and they're, you know, gaining that, they're gaining that knowledge and pricing that into their product. And so it's just a win-win to just be sure that you're, um, it's fluid and that you're constantly looking at these prices and everything that goes into it, not just the product cost. Mm -hmm. Jay, anything there? No, I, I love it, you know, because uh, I, I get back to that whole thing with, uh, this is not the food industry anymore, right? But it's, it's always like a funny saying uh, where it's just like, you you know, you get someone to come to your house for a repair, right? And uh, and when they're done, like they send you this uh, this invoice, and it says uh, cost of mail one dollar, knowing where to hit ninety nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and like you may be looking at your 
you may be looking at your your cogs, right? And you're just like, oh man, this is easy, blah blah blah, you know. Um, it's it's only this much. Why am I why am I paying so much? Uh, uh, but little do you like really think about that emotional piece or that value piece, where it's just like it's easy because you have 20 years of experience in this field, you know, um, and, uh, and someone else might not be able to know that, right? Like, I'm coming back to that, you know, that little thing with the, with the repair at the house is like, yeah, I can buy a lot of nails, but do I really know where to hit? You know, I just end up with a whole bunch of nails in my walls and still more problems probably, you know? so yeah um, maybe you hit a water pipe then you're really oh man <laughs> yeah now i need a pipe too <laughs> yeah i really so. like that i just recently had a client that was like i can't afford that you're way out of my budget and and that's fair and you're going to hear that and as a small business owner i i recognize that it's really hard to let that sale slide through your fingers especially when every sale super counts but sometimes you have to um, ask your clients to rise to your level and not vice versa. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, that's a really hard thing to do. As long as I feel though that you're priced fairly and you're not mm-hmm. crazy expensive, you know, I always appreciate that people will say like, mm-hmm. oh, that's too expensive. And they go to like three other bakeries in town and get quotes. And then they come back and they're like, actually, you were pre- pretty fairly priced, um, maybe lower than more than half of them. Um, yeah. And so that's a good feeling. That's always a great validation that you're priced in the right area mm-hmm. um, and that you're, you know, you're adjusting your your sales to match or exceed um, your, mm-hmm. your customers' expectations because, you um, you're, you want them to expect quality, but also that genuine integrity of product and service as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, there's a can. Uh, how 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 do you feel about uh, you know like the the thing behind quality? Uh, like you're you're charging for that quality. You're charging for that experience. You're charging for like the delivery of like all these different things, right? You know, um, and Jamie and I, like, I, we, we've talked about uh, the care that you put into uh, the way that you package and deliver your goods, you know, down to, down to like how it goes into the car, down yeah. to like the temperature that it's kept at uh, for like certain things, you know, um, and if you go to like a different baker that, uh, that, you know, maybe doesn't consider all of those things or doesn't have the experience to really be able to like consider all of those things right Mm -hmm. um it's taking you time to be able to get to a place where you're like um you know these are all the things that I do consider and and this is why my price is at this point you know because uh because I do deliver this level of quality um and and a lot of times you like so for all of us as business owners we don't think about all the little things that we do that makes us stand out to be uh, like beyond our uh, competitors, right? Um, it may be that uh, you've, uh, you've learned, uh, there's this sushi place where uh, if you're left-handed, they will plate your sushi a different way if you're left-handed. Uh, huh. And he charges, Three hundred dollars um, a seat, and you don't get a choice on like uh, on what it is that you get served. Three hundred dollars a seat. He's booked out months in advance, uh, and uh, you go in, and it goes down to like minute details. Like if you're left-handed, we serve you differently, um, and you might not think about all the things you do as a business owner, because over the last like five or 10 years or um, however long you've been in business, you've like fine tuned how you deliver your service, how you deliver your goods. um, And it's just second nature to you. And so you're just like, this is common sense. But the reality of the matter is that common sense is not common. (laughs) (laughs) You know, common sense 
is gained through like sweat and tears and times and, you know, uh, and testing products that you probably had to throw things away because you put too much baking soda in there or not enough baking soda in there, you know? Um, and, uh, and at the end of the day, when you serve your product now, uh, all of that reflects in your product. <laughs> and so, yeah, tonight we're talking about how prices ties into your goods. Um, but on top of that too, like all of these things, your education, your experience, your ex expertise, your skills, your quality and your time, uh, all ties into it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes you you, that's why you stand out. Um, and do not discount yourself in this. So yeah, I think that was another so, uh, soapbox of mine. <laughs> no, I love it. I think that we get that a lot at the bakery, especially when we're doing wedding cakes. You know, I love a good bride, but when they start negotiating with me, <laughs> okay, but what about, and I'm like, listen, this is not a negotiation. This is the price you can mm -hmm. pay it or um if you have a budget that you want to stick with we can meet that budget and, and give you a product that will fit that but i'm not going to give you a gucci bag on your target budget <laughs> that's not fair you know the people are like oh, oh yeah okay <laughs> like that's just not how business works but i will happily you know, give you a quality product for that budget. It's just not going to be a five tiered cake. Maybe we mm -hmm. cut it down to three, you know, so that there are negotiations open, but like your price per serving doesn't change. It's just the grandeur. Like, do you really need a five tier cake for 40 guests? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. It might be what you want for your pictures, but really your budget is a three tier cake. Um, where you keep the top one. So just all of the little factors that go in, but um, if you want to have a sustaining business, it's definitely about knowing your worth and standing behind your business and, and your integrity and your quality of the product for me. So, and that one I'm still learning and um, still working on <laughs> um, because we do a lot of, a lot of custom things and, um, you, you know, maybe some of our pricing is based on, um, my husband lost his leg in the military and now this is our budget. And you're like, okay, you can have a factor cake for that. I'll do it. Mm. <laughs> um, so it's <laughs> really like every experience is different, but yeah, yeah. I think that's in a whole nother soapbox. That's a whole nother workshop. Um, mm -hmm. and then let's see, uh, wrapping back, um, uh, to our, um, uh, like a farmer's market too. You know, um, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about like, uh, about like food and items that you create, right? Um, your, our farmers are also creating things too, you know, like uh, some of the things that come up in mind are things like, uh, like there's some things that our farmer, are, uh, a few of our farmers are kind of like battling right now uh, on some of their plots um, are certain kind of like infestations right and then we got to get rid of it or else we're gonna we're gonna lose a good chunk of our um our growth uh, and so yeah we can go an easy route and just get uh, pesticides or like other things that can easily get rid of it but then because of what we're doing um and like the value of those farmers, uh, they're going a much more natural way of being able to like find ways to be able to keep the soil nice, find ways to be able to like not add um, like weird chemicals um, to to the products and such. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all these like care and love that you're putting into uh, how you produce your goods. Um, and so, you know, really dive deep into it. If, if as a farmer's market manager, you know, or someone who helps out at a farmer's market, um, your farmers might be like, well, I just want to price at this point or whatnot, you know, um, I don't want to go a little bit higher because of whatever reason, but uh, you know that, uh, you know that they can price a little bit higher because of all the love, care, and attention that they've given it, um, you know, think about all this, all the things that they do go into it, um, down to like, like, how do they, how do you, uh, how do they care for when certain things like this come up, you know? Um, so give them a bit of that confidence if these things come up and they're doubting themselves a little bit uh, 
as a farmer manager, uh, I think that'll be really nice for you to provide too. So hopefully that kind of like connect the dots for all of us, those of us that are starting our own food business and also those of us that are uh, helping out at farmer's market. <clears throat> um, we got about maybe 15 minutes left or so here. <laughs> um, let me see, I'm pondering. Um, there is, we do have like some resources that we're gonna be sending out. Um, let me just pop this into the chat here. Uh, I wonder, where did I put the chat? <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. All right, so here is, here is this, if um, Jamie and I, if you're okay clicking onto that, mm. it gives us uh, a bit of an insight uh, into the cogs that you're put up. And so this is one of the resources that we're gonna be sending out. Um, so it might be like a, a nice little example, um, you know, to wrap up our time tonight together. I'm just like, hey, heads up. This is what uh, everyone's going to be seeing in their email. Um, if you can drop your email um, into the chat, right? <laughs> um, let's see. Um, okay, awesome. Yeah, there will be like, there will be, at, uh, a few other resources that will be popping into there too. Uh, but if you click on that link, it takes you to a, um, it takes you to a projection sheet where I've plugged in uh, what, what we had in the slides here, what Jamie Ann had in the slides for the cookies. Um, and it comes out, you know, and so you can go through and you can kind of play around with it. Uh, should I do a screen share? Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, how, where is this? I think this is it. Okay. All right. So everyone can see. Uh, screen share over here. Uh, so here, up here, you have like servings, right? Uh, batch size, batch size number two. Um, what, what you have here is we've just taken all of the, um, all of the data um, from, let me see, uh, Jamie Ann. You ran the numbers here, right? Mm -hmm. Taking all of the data from uh, from the cookie, um, the cookie recipe, and we've just plugged it into here. Okay, so uh, when you get this uh, tools, it's under the tools cogs calculator, and go in, plug in your recipe in here, and then plug in how much it costs for you when you do your bulk purchase, and then you plug in for your recipe, okay, for, for your recipe, um, how, how many servings are you able to create with that one recipe, right? Uh, and then it kind of pulls out your cogs naturally for you over here. Um, the cool thing is as you, as you do this, um, as you do this, you can, you can kind of gauge like, let's see, Miss Gwen, you mentioned that your cookies were bigger, right? Um, so in, I said 30 there, right? So initially it was five dozen, right? Five dozen, the numbers come off to be a little bit off um, here. So it's like 11 cents um, per cookie. But um, Ms. Quinn, let's say like yours is, uh, is twice the size, right? So that means your, um, your serving would be like half of that. And so, um, you know, so your cogs would be a little bit higher but it's still like a pretty nice uh, area for you, okay? Um, uh, for others, and you may be baking other things, you may be creating other things. Um, 
and then just plug it in, just kind of see how your cogs play out um, and play around with this. You will get our emails when we send it out to you. So just respond with that email um, and see, uh, see what questions you may have and we'll do our best to help you answer those questions for you. Okay, any thoughts and questions on this COGS calculator? <laughs> All we have to do is just plug in our stuff where it says flour, uh, put in the flour and then like, for instance, if I get a 10 pound bag instead of a, a two pound bag, then I would put 10 pounds or what I just, um, oh, the amount will be two, I mean 10, and then the unit will be pounds. Um, yeah, the, the only downside uh, to this, let me zoom in a little bit more here. <laughs> the only downside to this uh, COG sheet is that we we couldn't be able to do the conversion you notice how it says cups and it says cups right oh yeah um so we so you'll have to like just google um if you buy like a five pound bag of flour for like 4.99 right um which uh you know you'll have to just go through and just uh, google okay uh all-purpose flour um five pound equals how many cups, right? And then you'll just have to plug it in here, um, how, how many cups is, it is um, at your bulk price, right? Um, and so that's the only downside with this, uh, with this uh, COGS sheet is that because different things, uh, different ingredients have different density, uh, we can't create a simple conversion tool um, for all of your ingredients. So you'll just have to do a little bit of conversion when you plug in your bulk purchasing to make sure that it matches your recipe. Um, and then just plug in those numbers over here. Uh, and then that should, that should do pretty well for you. Yeah, and so it automatically, for instance, if I do the flour, and I put in 1.25 instead of the two, it'll automatically convert the whole line. Oh, yeah. So let's say, uh, let's say this is the cost, right? We'll just say that. And then uh, 1.25, right? So 1.25, notice how like it shifts a little bit um, and your cogs is slightly different, um, mm -hmm. right? So let me see here. By one cent, so not much, but you know, um, Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, it did change when you put the uh, one five. Then the whole line changed all the way over to cost per batch too. Yeah, and then maybe like your batches, your cookies are much bigger than this, right? So it may only you may only get like twenty four cookies out of the batch that you make, right? So uh, the cogs bumped up a little bit. So you can kind of just play around with the yeah. numbers just to see uh, how that ties into it. Granted, this doesn't, I didn't put in any labor in here, but if you scroll down, um, you can add in labor, right? So uh, like how many, you know, processing, cooking, let's say cooking, right? Let's say it takes you two hours from like prep, uh, uh, from like prep to complete, right? Um, let me see, that's your recipe. And then for every one hour, um, you know, you are paying yourself, let's say $25 per hour, right? Um, or, and then now, oops. Ooh, I'm glad we did this. I need to update one thing before. Yeah, so it didn't, <laughs> it didn't pull the data. Yeah, it didn't pull the data. I'll make sure that the, it, it pulls the data for you, okay? I'm just gonna plug this up here um, just to show an example because it uses the same kind of formula here, right? Um, so for here, you do, um, we're doing that, plugging this guy in, okay, hours. <laughs> um, so notice like, once you have this in here, if you account for your labor, your cogs come out to about $2.36 per, per cookie, right? Um, at this amount. So you can kind of play around with it. You're just like, I want to charge myself. I want to pay myself this much per hour. I want to pay myself this much per hour. And you see the, the cogs changing um, as you do that. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, have fun with it. Um, I'm seeing some emails in the uh, in the chat. If you've already put your email in there, awesome. If not, feel free to throw your email in there. We'll send out some resources to everyone. We got about four minutes left here before the top of the hour. Um, I just want to ask if there's any other things that we want to chat about or uh, you know ask about. <clears throat> Well, I just want to say thank you because I've been trying to get one of these sheets for the past couple of years and people say, oh, I have a cost projection sheet I can let you have. I say, okay, and I, I never get it. And then they'll give me one. And it doesn't do half what this one is doing. And this is exactly what I needed uh, in a cost projection sheet. Okay. Right now I do Excel sheet and I plug in everything. And then I have the total manual, the total formula at the bottom to total the columns and all that good stuff. But I had to manually input everything item by item out of my receipt books right now. And it's getting kind of tedious. And so this would make it a whole lot easier. Okay. Yeah, uh, this will be like, a, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that that is our goal to have this tool um, is that it makes life a bit easier for you. Um, and then, you know, as, as, you, as your business grows, you may outgrow this tool you know, uh, which is okay. And uh, if you out, when you get to a place where you outgrow this tool, um, you know, if you, if you are an iPhone or Apple product user, uh, then Jamie Ann mentioned uh, an app early on called, I think it's salt and pepper, right? Um, it is, it is a pretty robust tool that when you get to a place where you outgrow this uh, COGS tool here that we will be sending out, um, you can tap into that resource. I don't know if it costs a monthly subscription. Um, or well, I'll I find out. I, I did write that down when she mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's actually a really good tool and it's a $9.99 purchase, but it's a one-time purchase. So oh. a lot of those cost, um, costing tools are like a monthly subscription. We were, we had one that was charging us $10 a month. So this one is a really good find. Um, it, is, it is just salt and pepper. And that one you don't have to convert, which is really nice. <laughs> it just does it for you. That is good. That means like they've tied in all of the, the density uh, conversion and all of that. And that is a lot, a lot of work and a lot of data to be able to gather. So yeah, $10 one-time purchase. I think that's worth it. <clears throat> I just yeah. spilled some tea on myself. Um, be okay, it wasn't hot anymore. It's a real tea party. Yes. <laughs> um, anyone, any other thoughts that we have? You know, I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to kind of chat to, on this. Uh, uh, I'm going to move back over to this little guy here um, and then just show this screen. Go okay. ahead. Uh, so this is Jamie Ann uh, and my information here, okay, um, and oh, oh dear, I don't know if it's going to, okay, there we go, yeah, so this is uh, Jamie Ann uh, and I's information here, uh, our email is here, we also have uh, Robbie's uh, information is here. Robbie wasn't able to make it with us tonight, but Megan was here. So Robbie and Megan, um, they, they help out with a lot of the, the same thing. And so reach out to them um, if you have any questions regarding like farmers markets and support around that area. Um, they're a great resource all throughout Alaska. Okay. Um, let's see. We are right at eight o'clock here. Um, I will ask one last time if there are any other thoughts, questions, comments that we can chime in and chat about. I don't have any other questions, but I just wanna say thank you again so much. I'm sure I'll have many questions in the future, but this has been extremely helpful. So thank you very much. Oh yeah, definitely. Thanks again for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, same. I just want to say thank you so much. This was great. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, I will hang out until 
the last person signs out. Um, <laughs> but if, if we are at the top of the hour, so feel free if, uh, uh, if you need to jump off, you'd like to jump off, feel free to, um, I will just hang out until the last person uh, sign out or until we hit 810. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> If you well, stay we'll on, see, feel free to yeah. conversate and chat. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, thank, awesome. thank, thank you, Jay. I'm going to go work in my garden now. I've, I've tried, we're trying to get everything finished. You would not believe the size of the garden that we put together. We have like 15 things of potatoes and greens growing. To, my daughter has 85 tomato plants. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, that's what I was doing earlier. And then I said, I got to be home by six to do the thing. So now I'm headed back over there to finish and water and all that good stuff. Okay. Okay. So, well, guys well have enjoy. Good I'm glad the sun's still out, you know, being Alaska. Right. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. Uh, have fun. Um, enjoy. Get some sunshine in for us. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll chat some more. You know, there's okay, a, then. a few projects have a good, we have. Have, right? a good, have a good evening and weekend. Oh, thank you. You too. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.